What's going on, everybody? What's going on? It is good to have you, and it is especially good to have my good buddy Matt, aka Hockey Junkie, rejoining us. Buddy, it is fantastic to catch up with you. Everybody loves when we chat. I love when we chat. Welcome back, my friend. Boom. What an intro. <laughs> what a wicked intro. How's it going, buddy? I rehearsed that. No, I uh <laughs> I really didn't. Uh you guys are gonna be able to tell. And I'm doing well. Thank you for asking, my friend. That's um, good. I was just talking to you about this before we hit record. I'm like, this is going to be bare bones in terms of the background because our software has officially expired. Our Habs Tonight agreement with StreamYard has expired. Uh, so we're going to look to renew it at the, in the future and get the team back up and running with the show, maybe even in coming seasons. But um, for my purposes, nice. our black background, just so everyone sees on YouTube, it's very bare except for mine and Matt's. So <laughs> just wanted to set the stage for the disappointment. You know what I mean? Like the Habs season here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to keep it consistent, right? Everything's got to be consistent. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. So uh, I talked to you about recording before the California trip with the Canadians. And I was like, ah, let, let's wait till after the California trip. Let's let's see what happens with this team, right? So um, they get two out of three, though, man. I mean, they get four to six points. The LA Kings, the, the Kings game was ugly so much to the point where you even took off and we're like, I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. But, um, what do, you, what do you make of, uh, I think maybe I'm going to start with this right up front because, you know, we're about 21 games into the season now and we know where the Habs are at in the rebuild if we're really following as closely as you and I do on a daily basis, you know, doing content and everything. So I'll just put this out to you. Like how much patience do Habs fans really need at this stage of the rebuild here? Well, that's a, that's a tough question to answer, but I mean, obviously they need quite a bit of patience, right? Because, well... It just doesn't happen overnight, especially when you're going through a big rebuild process like the Canadians are going through right now, man. It's it's tough, but I mean, Habs fans are rabid too, like like rabies <laughs> rabid, man. They're they're going crazy already. Everybody wants a winning team now. Uh, yep. It's going to be tough. Imagine what it's going to be like next season if if you know they're still not making the playoffs. Eventually, they're going to have to try and make the push. But I mean, I still see this season as. Uh, this is still a rebounding season. I mean, the further they slip down the standings right now, I'm fine with it. And I know I know some people go crazy about that, like they don't like that. But, I mean, it's, it's just how it is. It's what's best for the team. So you, do you feel like, you know, I, I know that yeah, I've seen your hashtag for Celebrini. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like borderline. I'm like, is it appropriate to share or not? But do you want to say it? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's hashtag stiff weenie for Celebrini. And everybody's got to be on board. Everybody. I, I've been watching them. Him and Hudson, man, are just magic. It's like Frodo and Belbo and Gandalf and everyone. It's going to be great. If you don't know Lord of the Rings, you are not going to understand that right now. Let me tell you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, something I, I just learned recently that Celebrini and Hudson are playing together. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, is this why Lane is having such great numbers or is it a combination of the two or is lane just that unreal like when you watch his highlights man it's all him sometimes like i'm not saying it's all him but when he finishes like he finishes on his own sometimes right like he just he makes the, the crazy crossover i don't he's a crossover machine right that guy's just nuts yeah he is and you know what like after watching the past couple of games man it almost feels like lane hudson could have e even more points Honestly, like he's he just takes complete control. Sometimes his teammates just they don't capitalize on a lot of big chances that he's creating high da high danger opportunities. But um, yeah, him and Celebrini are just man. There's something to watch. They're exciting. And the World Juniors, we're gonna see them go head to head, right? I mean, we're gonna see like you know Team USA and Canada, and it's gonna be like Celebrini versus Hudson for Habs fans, right? <laughs> oh yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be bananas for sure. So what do you make of uh, let's let's go with this here. Um, and I first, I don't even know if I put this graphic up, but welcome back again to Matt. And um, you know we're on a tight time schedule tonight, guys. So we're going to try to push through as much content as we can. But uh, Matt was gracious enough to squeeze this in this this chat that you and I have been looking forward to having. And the viewers, the viewers are the best, right? I mean, you know it from your own channel, man. That Habs fans are so supportive and uh, of both of us. But like, man, your channel has really seen a lot of growth this past year. It must be humbling for you. Oh, it is, man. Like, I can't even, I can't even explain it. Like, it's, it's unreal. There's a lot of viewers. There's more and more viewers out of time. Just really supportive. And, and I mean, 
I never thought it would, you know, climb as as nicely as it did, but uh, I'm just humbled for sure. And we know the style that we're used to from you, which to hear you kind of be like soft and tender is not like you on your channel. <laughs> No man, I gotta I gotta stop that shit. We gotta we gotta get back to me right away here. That, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> Give us the real you, man. Um, <laughs> which you do. And you know something? The the one that got me that made me laugh the most recently, I don't know exactly which video it was, but it was within the last few weeks. And it yeah. was it was your line. If anyone doesn't know who Nick Bobrov is, he's head of scouting for the Russian side of the Canadians only, or is it beyond just the Russian leagues that he watches? I'm pretty sure he probably watches a lot of it, but he he's, plays a big role on the Russian side for sure. Right. So we were leaning on him to potentially draft Michkov, which we did not, by the way. But, yeah. you know, Nick Bobrov's I, I, basically your line was, you know, <laughs> I don't even know exactly which player it was you were talking about, but you were like, if this happens, like, I'm going to piss in Bobrov's pockets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do remember saying something like that, man. <laughs> I, I definitely said something like that. That was, that was a couple of videos ago. Yeah. But I will like, <laughs> honestly, if, if he does come into the NHL and just start tearing it up, then, you know, he's not going to have a dry shoe, Bob Rob. Not one. <laughs> Shoes, pockets, everything. He 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 headwear, nothing safe, <laughs> nothing safe, Matt. No, but you know what? Like that got me so good because I was like, man, once in a while, I think you just catch viewers off guard with one of your one of your zingers you come up with because uh, you you actually remind me of Eminem because Eminem actually talked about how he drives himself crazy with all the the words rhyming in his head throughout the day constantly. Like you must have player nicknames and everything. You've told me this before, no? Oh yeah, like there's nicknames that I can't even say. Like, <laughs> and it's funny too because like everybody I know in, in like in person, they all got nicknames. So I call everybody by their nickname. Uh, at work, I'm continuously calling people nicknames. Some of them they don't like, some of them they do, but whatever. I mean, a nickname's a nickname, right? Um, but it's a lot of fun, though. It is. It's a lot of fun. My my brain is just kind of slightly twisted. There's something, something's <laughs> not right. There's a couple of wires crossed up, but uh, it's always a good time. Always. <laughs> Yeah, I think you called yourself dement demented the one time. I'm like, don't be that hard on yourself, but like you got a you got a bit of a different sense of humor out east over there in, New in Newfoundland. Oh yeah, there's and there's a lot of people that I work with, man. They're just they're, they're crazy. They're you know, you think I'm bad. Jeez, some of the guys <laughs> down here, man. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, you must be you must be one of the tamer ones. And, and so yeah, yeah I'll, I'll calm myself that anyway. That you're you're good, buddy. You're good. Okay, so we, we, I think we talked, yeah, we talked about the California trip with the Canadians and um, the fact that they got four out of six points. All right. So we know that they beat San Jose, they beat Anaheim, two teams that are going to be at the bottom of the standings in the Celebrini sweepstakes. You know what I'm talking about? And, um, you know, the LA game was a throwaway. So, you know, going forward uh, the rest of the way, we want, uh, for me, I wanted the Canadians to be still relevant past Christmas. You got the Toronto Maple Leafs that have five regulation wins along with the San Jose Sharks. OK, so like, I don't think we got to be that upset with the way this season is going. It could be a lot worse. We could have four or five superstars on our team and our team would still be coming sh like big time coming short. So that's where I'm at in terms of like, calm down, guys, calm down a little bit here. Yeah, no, for sure. That's that's understandable. And I mean, especially when you look at the injuries too, they're, you know, beginning to build up again. Kirby Doc right away, two games in. Oh, that was a stinger, man. Like, I'm. I know. Always thinking about, you know, how much better it would be with Kirby Doc right now. He was really coming into his own on the second line. And I mean, him and Yuri Slavkovsky during the preseason were dynamite. And, and just to have that ripped away from my hands, my little <laughs> newborn baby just ripped away. It's two games in. <laughs> I know. Oh, geez, I, I can't even think about it. And now Jack Eye is out. Harris is out. Savard's been out. I even, I, I forgot we had Savard until I just started talking about him. Yeah, Bruno, you, you even forget half of these guys. Harvey Pinard, too. Oh, Harvey Bedard, yeah, that was Harvey Bedard. Name. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, Bedard's a sensitive word right now. My gosh, um, for That's obvious good. reasons, I wasn't going to get into it, but I'm like, oh my gosh, this whole thing with Chicago, here we go again, right? But uh, the fact that like Frank Saravalli came out like literally cursing on his podcast that he was so mad about those rumors, and we know Corey Perry has been let go. Uh, from the you know from the Chicago Blackhawks, he's been 
had his contract terminated, but they just addressed it actually within the last hour or so, saying that those rumors were not true. I'm not even, you, you know what they are if, if they're out there, right? But yeah, like what is with hockey Twitter and the hockey world, man? Like there just seems to be such a desire for anything to stir it up. And that's pretty extreme for me. Oh, that would have been, you know, one, that would have been one hell of a story. Holy crap. But uh, I'm still curious though, eh, of, of what actually happened. Because yeah. Carl Davidson did look like he was he was pretty emotional on his press conference, and he didn't really want to get into any details. I mean, it's got to be something serious. I, I know it's none of my business, but at the same time, the Jerry Springer side of me just really wants to know. <laughs> but I, I guess I'm never going to know. You know what I mean? Maybe maybe in a year down the road when Perry's retired or whatever, maybe maybe it's going to get leaked somehow. But something something major did happen. It's yeah, it, it is. And, you know, I was getting this information yesterday and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I, I would never go public even if like, I, I just, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it, but that's just me. The Jerry Springer thing. I, I mean, that part is funny, but it just, <laughs> it's just like, it's just the fact of like an, an RIP Jerry Springer, by the way, but it is, um, what was I going to say? It just kind of sad that it comes down to that. You know what I mean? But, uh, in the end, I, like you mentioned, Davidson was pretty emotional and all that stuff. And it's just, uh, it's strange times that we live in. Like it doesn't take much for one rumor to just to take off. Right. So hopefully, for sure. uh, hopefully people learn from this a little bit. Yeah, no, for sure. But on to less awkward topics. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Cause it's basically, we're just dancing around, you know, Corey Perry was, was so much fun to have. It was one of the first videos on my YouTube channel was, was Corey Perry becoming a Montreal Canadian to the point where Steve Dangle retweeted my, my video. And yeah. um, I was flattered obviously, because at the time I had just started following Steve and, you know, basically copying him and plagiarizing him and making my own version of, right. <laughs> so <laughs> Drew Deeks. Yeah. We, it's not obvious at all. Someone called me a Walmart, Steve Dangle the other day. I thought that was hilarious. I'm like, good for you. That is a good chirp. Like that's a good one. I'll oh. take it. I'll take that yeah. as a badge of honor. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so moving on from that, and I hope in the end, all parties end up, uh, you know, whatever the issue is, like you said, it's not our business, but in the end, I, I do hope that um, everyone's okay down the down the road, because like you said, it must have been something serious. But switching back over to Les Habitants, Josh Anderson. All right. So he's been a hot topic, of course, because of the, uh, the, the goal, lack of goal scoring. Hasn't had his first goal of the season, 21 games in. And the question continues to come up, what else can they do to get this guy going? I don't know the answer, Matt, but uh, I do feel for the guy a little bit because this guy still seems like he wants to be here, even through this rebuild, man. I feel really bad for him, too. And I mean, I'm, I was a big Josh Anderson fan. I still am, right? It, it sucks this season that, that, you know, me and you got just as many goals as him. Like, I wasn't <laughs> expecting that 21 games in. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I mean, you do got to feel bad for him. At, at this point, I've been saying I'm kind of hoping that they, they mix things up a little bit. You know what I mean? I, I'd like to see him down on the fourth line for a couple of games. And I know that might sound harsh, but I feel like he just he needs to go back to the basics. Obviously, it's it's not working right now in the top nine. So my, my guess is that if they put him on the fort line and maybe he just starts playing a crash and bang style of game. And again, like I know everybody's anti fighting and, and all this kind of stuff, but he almost needs to get pissed off. He almost needs to get more engaged. He needs to get mad on that fort line. And, and I'd like to see him mix it up a bit after the whistle and kind of just show some emotion, show that he's upset. Maybe throw some big hits, and and who knows? Maybe the goals start coming. Yeah. Do you think it's more in his head, or is it actually his line mates where he just can't seem to get the opportunities? Like where where where's what do you oh, see there? I feel like it's more in his head. I, I don't. You know, he's he's getting hop, he's getting opportunities. To be honest with been. you, like yeah. you know, it's kind of funny because I got folders on my computer of of every player, right? And you click on their individual names, and then it says 2022, 2023. So, like, you can look at highlights from each season that, I, that I've collected. And Josh Anderson right now is just – I can't wait for him to score because I'm going to make a huge compilation video of, of how many times he's missed. <laughs> <laughs> I've got – it's insane, man. There must be, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe 15, 20 clips of, like, grade A 
quality scoring chances, and he's just tossing it out in Mary Brown's parking lot every time, or or hitting <laughs> the post, or just he's just snake bitten really bad, and it's it's a big snake, man. That's yeah, big. that's a boa. That's a boa, boa. for sure, right? <laughs> It's not good. It's not good. <laughs> That's like Anaconda. Remember that movie in the nineties with like J Lo? I'm pretty sure it was awful. I'm pretty. I, I still remember it. I'm like you could like see the guy's body inside the snake. It was like it was her. It was hilarious and horrendous at the same time. But you're right. It is. He's he's snake bit man. And I just love the the elements he brings when he is still scoring and he's doing everything else on top of that. And you're like, oh, I love this player, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's what we're missing right now from him. Um, I want to talk to you about Marty St. Louis. There's a lot of, I don't know that it's a lot. I, I think it comes more from the French media. I think we're, we, you get a bit of a hindsight sometimes into, um, or a peek behind what, you know, certain outlets seem to try to always stir it up. And it does seem like the French media does get accused of stirring it up more. And I think it's, you know, my cousin has interpreted for me a lot of the French that he sees online. He's like, yeah, you know, they, they do stir it up a bit more about Marty St. Louis and whether he's a guy and whether he's supposed to be the coach or not the right guy for this young group coming up. But, you know, what I heard Stu Cowan say, even though, is that there is no pressure on Marty St. Louis to win right now. Whereas when Dom Deschamps was here, there was pressure on him to win. That's why he got fired. So, you know, what do you make of Marty and the job he's doing right now with these young kids still? And the veterans for that matter. Yeah. You know, I I feel like he's doing a good job. I mean, yeah, there's, there's obviously some decisions that he made that I uh, question like, I, I've been questioning the lineup sometimes, but I mean, as a fan, we are do that. Like, it doesn't yeah. matter who's the head coach. Yeah, <laughs> you can pick any head coach that that the Canadians have had over the last couple of decades, man. And there's always a point in the season you're looking at the lineup and you're scratching your head and you're like, what? The, what is he doing? Like, I was looking at some old footage from uh, 2012 the other day. I seen Mike Blondin playing on on Thomas Placanic's second line. Randy Cunningworth had him there, and I was like, "Man, what, what was he thinking? Like, <laughs> freaking this Mike Blondin." But uh, that's that's the the odd part about it. Overall, I think he's doing. I think he's been doing a good job. I mean, I like the I like the work that he's been doing with a lot of the young kids. Uh, seems like he's finally got Gallagher going again. Gallagher looks like he's you know rejuvenized this season. He's looking a lot better. Yeah, I mean it's not all Marty St. Louis. You got to give some credit to the player as well, but it seems like he's starting to find his role again, and and that's what he needs to do as as head coach. He needs to get he needs to get the best out of his players. But uh, it, everybody's going to be pissed off with him. Like I'm going to tell you that. You know what's funny? When Marty St. Louis first got hard, like the first two videos. <laughs> I keep joking about it because everyone was madly in love with him. And I was like, man, you know what? It's going to suck in a couple of years when we're all, we're all pissed off with Marty St. Louis. <laughs> like, <laughs> such a likable guy. But, but it happens every time. Like Every every head coach has a has a shelf life or whatever. And he's right. It's, it sucks. But overall, man, I, I've got no problems with him as of yet. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I know that this doesn't mean much because I, I, I met him twice. And basically the first time I met him, I kind of blacked out because... Uh, <laughs> I was like, I want to go in and ask for this this guy for a picture and then just get out of his hair, right? But yeah. like I wanted to enjoy the moment and like I wanted to ask him a thousand questions after and I didn't, right? So I ended up talking to Kent Hughes instead. But with Marty though, you just get this vibe from him that like th- this is what this is the vibe I was getting and watching his post game the other day against against the LA Kings, a game where you know everyone was pissed off. You were bored, I was bored, it was not a fun game to watch. I was fortunately only able to watch the highlights but you know what i liked though was that you really saw the player side of him come out just understanding the kind of games that happen in the nhl where you know some things you don't have control over right so like the canadians turned over pucks kovacevic honda civic right had himself a bad game he had turned the puck over three times you know like just bad bounces went against the canadians and they just couldn't even get a goal on the board so just it was just a it was a throwaway game, but Marty just seemed to handle it well enough to the point where I'm like, you know what? I can, I can see this game as a throwaway. And if he can too, realizing that like with the Tampa Bay lightning and the New York Rangers, if you don't think there's been games like that for him throughout his career, his hall of fame career that happened where you're just like, you know what? Like I, we had, we had a decent effort from the guys, but we just got nothing in the end. Like, I know fans can't appreciate and understand that, but I just like his cool, calm head about, 
the future because right now clearly it's not just about the results. You're right, man. He's he's really good. He's really good with his words too in these in these interviews after the game and, and before the game, like <laughs> the guy's wicked. He's wicked when he's <laughs> talking to the media. I know. Yeah. He's the gift that keeps on giving to the media. And I think Eric Engel says that every time. They're just kind of like they he's they know he's gonna be a quote machine. Like whereas with coaches, you don't always get that much insight, right? So sure. I guess they appreciate that from him, but eventually obviously it is going to be about the results in the next couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So yeah. in that respect, you know, Marty's got his work cut out for him, but we also have to have a healthy lineup. <laughs> like, my gosh, you know, I know it's the age old excuse, but it wouldn't hurt if we didn't have guys hurt. Um, <laughs> every anyways, you know how it is, Matt, you know how it is. Um, oh, yeah. I want to jump into this with you because you and I both were on the same wavelength doing prospect videos in the last 24 hours. <laughs> so you, this is where I think Habs fans are, are what the most encouraged right now in terms of where we're at. For sure. At least that's the way it seems. Everybody likes looking at the prospect videos and, uh, and, you know, it's just seeing highlights and seeing how they're doing in general, because well, when the product is not really there at the NHL level right yet, I mean, everybody's, they want to see something. Yeah. They're, they're going to want some candy from somewhere, right? <laughs> and that's what's happening, right? With the OHL. I mean, Owen Beck even got a shorty last night I seen. And uh, and you did, a, you did a video on Dude Where's Michar because, I mean, he's been, uh, he's been lighting it up with Kitchener. And he's trying to prove what he said the other day was that he's, I mean, it's a bit cocky, Matt. I don't know. But it, he was kind of saying he wants to prove how maybe he doesn't belong in the OHL, that maybe he's a step above and he's got to show that I like it. And you know what? I feel like after this season, well, he's, he's got, I'd like to see him spend one season in Lavelle. I, I really would kind of like, you know, the Wawa trajectory. I'd like to see him take that <laughs> scenario and, and then just jump straight into Lavelle. But, uh, I'm glad he went back this season. I, I am like Kitchener's got a good team and, uh, he's, he's a big part of that right now. And he's not just, you know, he's not, uh, picking up a bunch of you know points just from his teammates benefiting from everybody else he's doing he's putting in some work too and that's nice to see so what do you make of him and owen beck because there seems to be some side of the fan base that thinks owen beck at 33rd overall is gonna maybe it's a, it's interesting to think of how close these guys actually were i just realized that last night mashar was selected 26th overall in the first round and owen beck was the first pick in the second round at 33rd so yeah there's a debate about who's got the higher ceiling. So what do you make of that? Higher ceiling. That's For me, tough. it's Mashar. I, I think it's Mashar, but I, I think, know if, you know, I think Mashar might have the highest ceiling, but I think Beck's floor is a lot higher possibly okay. than Mashar's. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like Beck is going to be a, a safe pick. <laughs> like, I really like him. I know last season I, I had him, you know, leaps and bounds over Mijar. I was I was really excited about Owen Beck. But uh this season Mijar has shown a lot of improvement. He's probably the most improved prospect, in my opinion. One of them at least, especially, you know, looking at statistically he is for sure. Yeah. He's putting up way more points. But uh still Owen Beck is uh, he's just such a well rounded player. You know what I mean? He's he's got that He's got that crazy look in his eyes sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> he does, and you gotta love that too, right? I'm I'm a sucker for these kind of guys. Seeing him like get mixing it up and stuff, and I don't know. You just you can't have too much of that. I seen <laughs> Ryan. Did you see Ryan Backer throwing throwing left handed bombs last night? No. Did you see that on Twitter? Yeah, he was. I saw on Grant McCaig's Twitter. He was he was chucking. He was chucking. Uh, with I think his gloves were still on. <laughs> but if you look it up, <laughs> no like, way. I swear I saw Reinbacker throwing some throwing some bombs. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was him. I mean, I, I know it was him, but uh, I was surprised, man. Now that's pretty badass. I got to look at that right <laughs> after this. Right after this, I'm I'm heading right to Grant McQuaig, Grant McCaig's Twitter for sure. <laughs> yeah, man. It it was. It caught me by surprise to say the least. He's like, "Oh man, like Reinbacker's got some jam." I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> like it's good to see." You know, I'd especially a that. big defenseman, he kind of needs that, right? Yeah, I mean, for for going fifth overall and the the circus that I don't even know what was more dramatic, Slav the Slav Slavkovsky pick was more dramatic. I think being in Montreal, 
in the Bell Center <laughs> first <laughs> overall. But Rhinebacker was just like there was a collapse of the fan base, half the fan base or more, I think, that happened when they picked him. <laughs> and me included, I think. I was guilty. Oh man, yeah. Oh, for sure. I was guilty. And, and you know, I felt bad for the kid. Like immediately after, obviously, you know, he's, he's a hab now. I, I gotta love him, but, uh, I still can't like, I still can't go against my word. And a lot of people, they don't like that. eh? like, I wanted, I wanted a, a forward at the draft and, you know, I was preaching that for the entire year, man, <laughs> since oh, yeah. Christmas, I was oh, nonstop yeah. wanting a forward. Me I too. wanted Michkov. I liked Ryan Leonard. Um, yep. yep. I was big on Leonard. <laughs> yeah. But I mean. I can't just put out at a side now. Like it's still how I felt, and it's still the, the area that I see the team lacking the most right now. Like you know, up front, I, I feel like they need that. They need something big up front. That's just that's the way I see it. Right? I feel like the defense cupboard is just it's it's good. We're good. Yeah. If they if they get another top ten pick this season, and uh, and they take a defenseman. <laughs> God, <laughs> it's not going to be good. I'm going to get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to I'm going to lose my mind. I think I, I think I'm going to lose my mind. Yeah, that that would be fair. I think at that point, like I think at that point, that's when you're allowed to freak out. This year, we were a little short short sighted. I think, um, but who knows? We don't know. We don't know what he's going to become yet. But what do you make of Jacob Fowler? He seems to be the consensus Habs goaltender, the future, according to some. And honestly, like, dude, I, I, I love that kid. And I don't even, I haven't, he hasn't been a Hab very long. He's not even signed, but like Jacob Fowler, um, is obviously posting great numbers in college. Caden Primo did the same thing. People are saying, you know, don't, don't over, over qualify him too soon. But, uh, what do you make of the goaltending picture of the future here? Fowler definitely, you know, He's he's been looking really sharp. He's got good numbers. Um, the draft pick that they took from uh, the goalie they took from Russia too is doing really well. Volokin is that his name? Yeah, the people yeah, are he's, high on him also. Yeah, yeah, he's doing good too. Um, and Dobish, I mean, his numbers in Laval have been kind of kind of meh, but I, at the same time, he's only twenty two years old. He he's got a lot of development left to go, and uh, who knows, man, maybe. Everybody just looks at the numbers right now and they're just tossing them under the bus already. You know what I mean? Fowler's the new fancy toy in town. Everybody's gone cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs about him. Yeah, he's good. He's His numbers are good, but who, who knows really? Because goaltenders are just, they're so weird, man. They are. They're, they're weird. Have you ever been in a goal? Have you ever been in a room with like 10 goalies? <laughs> no, and I don't want to. <laughs> Man, I, I haven't either, but I mean, I bet it's some freaky shit that goes on, like some really psychedelic, trippy, trippy stuff. But they're all, they're also different, right? Like you yeah. don't know when they're going to break into their own. And uh, sometimes it can take until they're 26, 27, 28 years old. So it's so hard to predict the future on, on the on the goaltending side of it right now. But hopefully one of them, at least one comes through and becomes becomes an NHLer. We'll see what happens, right? So a are you good do, NHLer. Do you want to hang on to Sam Montembeau or are you open minded to a trade if it's worth it? Oh, everybody's got a price. <laughs> <laughs> Just like uh Ted DiBiase used to say. Um that's right. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like he's got a he's he's a really good goaltender, Montembeau. He's he's been putting up some solid numbers for especially for the product that's in front of him. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's ever since he came here, he's been dealing with four or five rookie defensemen, like a bunch of young kids that are all like they're all doing pretty well, fairly well for you know the the age group on the back end. But uh, I feel like Montembeau is doing pretty good. Uh, it all depends really on how much is offered. But yeah, but again, everybody's got a price. Edmonton's they should be looking for a goalie right now, so. Yeah, um, I feel ex- like they should yeah. be. Yeah, they so, should I mean, be. If, if yeah. they're offering like something massive, it's it's hard to say no. Yeah, I don't th- I don't see Ken Holland having the. I think he's too stubborn for that. Like just his, given his experience and, and and McDavid just lit it up again the other night. He's back apparently, even though it was against Anaheim or San Jose or whatever it was, or I forget. Anyway, but um, our time is short tonight, so I'm gonna have to let our buddy Matt here go. 
uh, as much as I hate doing that because I love them so much. But uh, <laughs> feelings mutual. Feelings mutual. We have a lot of that going between us, man. I can't wait to meet someday. And uh, I can't wait for you to go to the Bell Center for the first time. So I'm really oh, pumped too. for that for you, pal. Me too. Thanks, man. That's going to be a video of the likes that your your viewers have never seen. I'm sure they're going to be psyched for us. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, talk about sure. the whole thing. You're going to be out of your mind. I know it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I can't wait. Absolutely cannot wait. All right, my man. Well, thank you for tuning in, everybody. Uh, that is Matt, a.k.a. Hockey Junkie. You know him. You love him. I know I know him, and I love him. <laughs> and uh, everybody does, Matt. So thanks for coming on, as always, my good man. Hey, thanks, man. Anytime. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you on the next one. All my best.